This episode of the Soupcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company in your own Ohio backyard of Perrysburg, Ohio. Uh, they are a world class hand roasted micro batch coffee, fresh roasted after you order. No more buying these pre batch crap that you would find on the on the supermarket you get fresh roasted after you order shipped directly to your home uh great products such as the fierce the dark roast the cast iron a medium roast the thor medium dark or even the loki a medium light there's every type of copy coffee for anybody over at ironbeancoffee.com again that is ironbeancoffee.com america's local coffee roaster this episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is also an Ohio-based company. They're also uh, in the northwest of Ohio. Uh, they, they are specifically more in like the uh, Lima Finley area, Cary, if you know where Cary, Ohio is. Uh, that's where they are. Uh, they have some of the best seasonings. It's it's grill season. Guys, it's grill season. It's time to get that grill going, and you shouldn't be grilling without the assistance of the Mad Canadian. That, it's really just that simple. Kyle, I fired up the grill for the first time this weekend. I made some steak and you better believe the carry steak was on it. Made I a nice some burger today. Yeah, I, it was a nice big uh, flat iron steak or a uh, I, think, I think that's the term for it. But yeah, it's it's one of my favorite things to, to throw on the grill. And, and I made I made Kyle as a side dish some poutine. And I'm going to tell you how to do that in the next ad break. So that's a bit of a teaser for you. If you want uh, to buy some stuff of your own, make sure to use the Sloopcast 10 promo code to get 10% off your entire order. That is Sloopcast10 at mad Can at the mad Canadian bbq.com. That's the mad Canadian bbq.com. How's it going, everybody? We are a week away from some Ohio State football. Yes, sir. Uh, which, okay, so Goose. First off, I've 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 thought many times about killing geese. I've never thought once about actually eating one. Uh, which which mad Canadian spice do you put on a goose? I. I really need to know. Oh, the steak. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Aren't geese protected? I, I don't know why there's a thousand million of them everywhere all the time. Yeah. I, there's there's more geese than there's certainly more geese than we need. I'll, I'll say that much. <laughs> yes, I agree. All right, let's go ahead and hop into the rest of the, the start of the show here. Yep. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? You're all right. How are you doing today, Jared? I'm uh, I'm doing good. I I have no complaints. We have football coming. Uh, yep. It's it's just a it's just a spring game. It's nothing spring too game. big. It's nothing feels too like crazy. But it's football. It's football in the shoe. It feels like spring. It's it's, it's a great. It's, it's going to be a great weekend. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I just hope Ohio State wins. And by Ohio State, I mean the gray team. Oof. That's right. Team Gray. Oof. What's up? Team Scarlet all the way. Team, Team Gray, what's up? Team Scar <laughs> By the way, Team you are wearing exclusively gray right now. It's more black. Uh, black is just dark gray. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gangland's on Team Gray. That's right. All right, Kyle, we have a lot to get to today. Uh, let's see. We're, we're going to do a bit of a spring game preview in the form of uh, ask Sloopcast questions. 
So we're going to do that. I asked uh, all the uh, Sloop Cats and, and people in our Discord basically just say, you know, what do you got around spring football questions? You know, bury us. So we have a bunch of questions from our Sloop Cats in, in regards to spring football and the spring game and all of that. So we uh, will do that. We have some other Ask Sloopcast questions, not necessarily related to that. But before we do any of that, Kyle, we have news. Yes. Um, the color that I'm wearing, black, Jared. Mm -hmm. Black Dark stripes. Mm -hmm. We got some, got some more black stripes um, news here. Um, two of them, in fact. Um, earlier in the week, we have Marvin Harrison Jr. getting his um, black stripe removed. A little, little surprise. Uh, I thought there were going to be some more names, but ahead of Marvin Harrison Jr. But he was so happy to get his black stripe removed last week, and probably one of one of the talk um, players, freshmen, especially on our show too, Trevion Henderson, or as, as some people in our Discord said, RB one. Uh, it's it's a growing it's a growing sentiment. Yes, don't don't steal my bit. Don't steal my bit, gangland. We're, we're I've started calling him J.R. Dobbins. As in Junior Dobbins, because I think. Uh, not stealing, approving. Here's the thing, though. You said it on the show before I did. Maybe I was saving it. I wasn't, but maybe I was. Um. by the way, Kyle, you missed Jack Sawyer. That's right. Yes, Jack Sawyer. How could I forget? Yes, Jack Sawyer as well. Yeah, Thank so. That's three black stripes removed for this class already. And I would say none of them a, a huge shock. Now, was Marvin Harrison Jr. the first wide receiver? I think most people would, would assumed it was Abuka, just based on the fact that Abuka was a top 10 player. But uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., no slouch, uh, no slouch whatsoever. So not not a shock exactly, but uh, with Henderson and Sawyer, you know, those would have been two of the guys who you would have put money on being in the top three for sure. Yep, yep, absolutely. Um, definitely more more to come here. Um, we'll see we'll see if there's any more right right before um the spring game here. I'm sure I, I'm sure some will be announced like tonight. I'm sure like some of them are going to uh, it's it's three. It's three total. It's it's Harrison, Henderson, and Sawyer. Uh, there was there was one last week, which but he was, was um, but he was from Jacobi the previous class. Kawan. yeah, he was from the previous class, though. Yes, yeah, yeah, Jacoby Cohen. But like I said, he was uh, twenty twenty class. Uh, other news, uh, you know, we talked some twenty twenty class, some twenty twenty one class. Now of the twenty twenty two class, CJ Hicks. Uh, linebacker from the great state of Ohio, uh, just lo or lost, just gained his fifth star. So he is now officially a five star outside linebacker from the great state of Ohio. Absolutely. Expecting big things from him. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh, as um sticking with football here, um, the portal here, por the portal give us in the portal give us away and so <laughs> happens the way <laughs> and so happens um, you're shooting for taketh away taketh away there you go uh max ray has entered the portal and i think wherever he goes i think a lot of the schools that is interested in him he'll he'll have a very good shot of starting kind of look at like jonah jackson for instance yeah um, Max Ray is fully capable at starting at most programs and he'll, he'll be fine. He'll, he'll, he'll get to go start somewhere. Uh, once a Buckeye was a Buckeye, I wish him the best. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, there's going to be a lot. There's gonna be a lot of transfers from, from Ohio state before the end of, or excuse me, before the beginning of the season before September 2nd. Is that when we decided it was on a previous episode, Kyle, uh, before mm -hmm. the first game, uh, this year, uh, there will be, uh, I would say a small handful of players probably leave the program. There's two position groups in, in general, uh, in which I am looking at, I mean, you, you look at the huge glut of talent 
that is young and at the wide receiver position. And, you, you know, you sort of draw some of your own conclusions there, you know, with two established veterans capping things off at the top and a bunch of great freshmen, both, you know, red shirt and true. It's it's a, there's a glut of talent at the wide receiver position. So, uh, you know, you draw your own conclusions there. And with a bunch of the young linebackers balling out, you have to wonder who in between, you know, who doesn't get to start at linebacker and how does that how does that turn into potential transfers? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yep. I mean, I mean, kind of sticking going back with like Max Ray. I mean, he this is no slouch of a player. I mean, no. he, he's a, he's a he's a top 100 recruit um, in the what was it here? 2018 class. Uh, number seven offensive tackle in the nation, and everybody was going after after him. Yeah. Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, Auburn, you name it. They were they were going after him. Well, and he he's a junior. He's a red shirt junior. Mm -hmm. He's grad transferring. He's going to be eligible right away. And because last year, from an eligibility standpoint, straight up doesn't count. He's yep. grad transferring with three years of eligibility left. So he has a lot of opportunity in front of him and uh, you know, I wish him the best unless he, unless he goes to Michigan, in which case I don't wish him the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, speaking of the um, taketh away, uh, Dwayne Washington has announced to no surprise announces that he will be entering the NBA draft. Yeah. Uh, he, like EJ Liddell will maintain eligibility while doing so. But I, I want like EJ Liddell, I guess there's a little more hope here. There's a little bit more hope that maybe he ends up coming back, but I'm, I'm not counting on either of them. Yep. Agreed. But I agree. All right. That's, that's it for the news here. Black stripes, portals, stars, draft. Let's get into the spring game, Jared. Yeah, spring game this Saturday noon on the Big Ten Network because I because pretty much anybody who's listening is probably not going to be able to get tickets because there's only four and a half thousand yeah tickets for the general public. Uh, only just a tad over nineteen thousand will be in attendance for this upcoming weekend. Um, and hats off to um, to Ohio State just over half of them going to frontline workers over at the Wexner medical center, about two and a half thousand to, to students as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, and like Kyle said, only about, only about four and a half K going to general public. And I wonder what general public really means even like, mm -hmm. is, are those just going to be like, cause I believe they go on, do not do not quote me on this. I want to say I saw this somewhere. It's like Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Now, I know they go on sale Monday. Do not quote me on the 10. Jared, you said 10 a.m. and they actually went on sale at eight and I missed my don't don't blame me. Don't double, double check literally everything I say on the show. But um, I and then I are those four and a half thousand actually just going to be like first come first serve. Are donors going to get get it get it <laughs> what 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 are you what are you doing what are you doing gangland uh <laughs> are, are are donors getting even first treatments what about the parents do the parents mm -hmm. not count towards that nineteen thousand? are are they in a separate pool or are the parents tickets coming out of the general public pool i guess i I don't even know how many of that four and a half thousand is actually truly general public. But, you know, we'll find out or we won't. Maybe I don't know. But point is, is that good luck. Yeah. You're trying to get into that game. Good luck. I'm mm -hmm. not even trying, but <laughs> you guys go, go get it. Look at this. This is sorry. I'm kind of sidetracked here. Um, Never. I, I kind of want to touch base real quick on the recruiting real quick here. Okay. Recruiting. Sure. Surprise recruiting segment. Go. 
<laughs> well, I just found it interesting. So 2022 class, Ohio State's in first right now has the best recruiting class as of today. You want to get you want to guess who's in the top 10 here, Jared? Oh, it's 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 April. Who cares? You know, who's probably not anywhere near the top 10 is Alabama. Correct. Yeah, they're well, not. <laughs> where, where Where's Alabama? I bet they're down at like 40 or 50 or 60 or something. Huh? 17. 17. That's 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 great recruit for Alabama. Five recruit five we're recruit. screwed. Guys, we're screwed. Bama's at 17 in in April. Normally, they're like. They have like one or two players at this point, and then they just add everybody during the season because that's what Bama does. Well, here, here, here's a good thing, though. Ohio State has a better average recruit base. It's it's too it's too early to to get too caught up in the race G- of it. Gangland knows. Gangland knows. Sitting in at number six, the Scarlet Team Scarlet. What? How dare you? <laughs> How the dare Scarlet you? Knights? The Scarlet Knights sitting in at number six. Greg Schiano, yeah, that, on the that, recruiting that, trail. That, that, calm down. It's April. That's, that's all I'm, I'm just going to say, calm down. It's April. That's all I'm going to say. And I, I, I thought that's interesting. You just see, you see Rutgers up there. Um, Penn State's doing their early thing right now. Uh, how Which, many, how many flip out of that class? I don't know. Uh, looking at, they, they have 11 commits right now. Four of them, four of them are four stars. So like if Ohio State, calls one of those kids in October and says, Hey, you want to, which, which side of this beat down do you want to be on? <laughs> yeah. They, they just got their quarterback, um, a, exactly. a dual threat, uh, top hundred kid, actually their best in the class right now. Um, Gavin Wimsat out of Kentucky. Good. Um, Try and three, hold on to him. Three dual, dual, um, quarterback not that that's nice question is will he be there in december will he be there in february <laughs> we we've seen a record number of decommitments for the 2020 class or excuse me the 2021 class and we'll see the same thing in 2022 because a lot of these kids are committing just to get in on somewhere none of these kids have gone on actual visits yet N- none of this means anything right now like well, speaking of that, you hit of that June, one. things are going to go nuts in June. Yep. June is going to be crazy, crazy, uh, which is good for us. More talk for us in the in the wasteland period. Uh, but yeah, June's going to be crazy. So so just keep an eye open when June comes for JTT. Because I guarantee he's going to he's going to want to do his trip in June. And we'll we may we may see a commitment or commitment date. Hopefully sometime in June from him. Yeah. Still, still, still got a straggler out of that 2021 class. I yeah. still feel fine about it for what it's worth. I still feel just fine about it. Agreed. Agreed. All right. Back to the spring game. Back to the spring game. More importantly, Jared, who's going to be in the attendance? Brutus? Brutus. Because he missed the entire season, didn't he? He did. Why? He He has a... He, no cheerleaders. There's no cheerleaders. There was no band or okay. Brutus. Can I can, can I can I say the thing that I don't like to say? I I, I I need to acknowledge for a second that there's a human being inside Brutus, which is not a thing I like to ever acknowledge. I like to just believe he is my Santa Claus. I just want to believe. But like he's already wearing a face mask. He's wearing an actual <laughs> he was fine. Yes. Good job, Jared. You just you just ruined everybody's I'm sorry. hopes and dreams now. It really felt terrible saying that out loud. Yes. This is and this is why you should be on Team Scarlet. We I will not rip apart your hopes and dreams. <laughs> Team Gray <laughs> is realistic. Okay. <laughs> We're very pragmatic, Team Gray. <laughs> There All right, Kyle. All let's right. get into these Ask Sloopcast questions. Uh, I asked the I asked our uh, Sloopcats and some other people in our Discord to send us your spring football questions because we wanted to do a spring game preview and maybe do a bit of a spring wrap up. As you know, the spring game is essentially the end of the spring practice session. So 
so, wanted so to be, sort of bring all that together. Yes. Yeah, sp- speaking of like our Discord providing the questions, hit us up on the Discord. Um, we're going to be chatting away at noon before noon during the spring game uh just because i mean hey what else are you going to do on a saturday at noon um i think we should even kyle hear hear me out on this Mm -hmm. what if next week's podcast is us doing commentary of the spring game while it happens could be too too long oh we cut it down for the actual podcast i'd cut it down for the actual podcast i'd i'd edit it down a lot Hmm. what We'll talk offline. Okay. Okay. We'll talk offline. Okay. <laughs> um. All right. Ask Sloopcast questions. This one comes from Buckeye Esquire. Uh, he says, will slash should they go more live game situations versus previous years due to missed spring last year and many new starters? Uh, I would say the missed spring last year is not a factor. They might be more likely to go live because of the youth. That's absolutely possible. And they might do it because they're way healthier now than they would be had they just played a full season that ended that ended three months ago in January. Uh, So I would say it's more for the abbreviated season last year than the spring game last year, but I, I think ultimately, yes, is the answer to the question. Mm-hmm. What do you say, Kyle? I agree. I agree. I, I really think a lot of it, it's, it does come down to the youth that this team is this year. I, th- I think we'll see a, a lot more live game situation, especially for the defense. Yeah. It, it's just a lot of new faces on the defense this year. Mm-hmm. Um, another question uh, will the lineups give any insight into actual early depth chart thoughts from the coaches? Um, will the lineups give any insight early depth chart? I w- I'm interested to see what the linebacker groupings are. Yes. I think that's a thing I'm very interested to see because the linebackers, you kind of want to put those guys together. Um, that's right, Michigan Bucknut. I, I did have the best picks for the for our draft on last week's episode. Uh, the so I don't know the I, I am interested. I'm interested to see. The, I feel like they're going to put. Yeah, we're still waiting on two o two o. He two o two o is wait. He if anyone doesn't know, he's a linebacker. Played for Tennessee last year. He's in the transfer portal. Uh, a lot of it depends upon how easily he can transfer from Tennessee to Bama if he can. And if he can't, he's probably going to come to Ohio State instead. But the L, uh, the SEC is currently exploring rules about inter or inner, not inter, inner conference transferring. Uh, so I he wants to go to Bama. But if he can't do an interconference transfer relatively easy, he'll probably come to Ohio State instead. And so I think he's waiting to hear what the SEC says. Uh, so what was I saying? Lineups. Yeah, I'm interested to see what linebackers get grouped together. I'm interested to see what defensive backs get grouped together. And I feel like a lot of people are making the assumption that the quarterbacks are like, Ooh, what quarterback are we going to see with like the starting offensive line? And I feel like they're just not going to give us that obvious of a nod. If memory serves and it, and my memory is terrible, so it might not. When it was, when it was Joe Burrow versus Haskins, I believe they were on the same team in the spring, at least at the beginning of the spring game. And then I think maybe they split them up for the second half. I, I don't, exactly remember but they're not going to give us any quarterback indication that both of the quarterbacks either the quarterbacks won't be assigned specifically to a team and they'll just sort of float back and forth because they'll be wearing black jerseys anyway or they'll both be assigned to the same team they're not going to give us any indication on the quarterback i know a lot of maybe that's what you were trying to say buckeye esquire but they're not going to give us any indication on the quarterback. Mm-hmm. Yep. Agreed. 
Uh, Buckeye Zach asks us, will the spring game bring us a notion of who the starters will be at linebacker or will it still be too early to tell? I kind of touched on that, Kyle. Do you do you have any other thoughts? No, I'm I, 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 I it could go either way, in my opinion, honestly. Um, I, I really think that in my mind. I think whoever's going to be the starters at linebacker is obviously going to get a big um, head start or get um, just are going to be better off of being the actual starters in, in the fall here. But I, I, I think it's too early though. I just think it's too early. Yeah. I don't think they're going to wrap up the battle. Um, but if I will say this, you might just look at the number of reps that might be interesting. And also it'll be interesting to see if maybe they do like a number one's offense versus number two, or excuse me, number one offense versus number one defense. Like one of the teams is primarily the offensive starters. And one of the teams is primarily the defensive starters. And if we see that, then it will be interesting to see who the linebackers are, but they don't always, in fact, I want to say they mostly don't ever do that. Mm-hmm. All right. What's the next question, Kyle? Uh, let's see here. Uh, who are you looking to see stand out the most as a defensive back for the spring game? Uh, really, I'm just looking for any of the, the corners to show me something. Uh, Martinez or Cavazos uh, would definitely be who I'm looking at, I I think would be the two guys I'm looking at the most. Um, Hickman, Burke, um, Ransom, I I think. Yeah, Ransom and Hickman, I I think, are two guys to keep an eye on. Um, I feel like either Ransom or Hickman are going to. I feel like I feel like I'm okay at the safety position this year. I I feel very good about the safety position this year between those two. And then obviously you throw in Proctor corner corner is what I want to see the most, because I think we all feel pretty good about seven banks, but who the hell is going to be number two and who the hell is going to be number three. That's that's so up in the air to me. Uh, And I think the wide receivers are so deep that dudes are going to get exposed at corner if they're not ready. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely. Uh, but guys, Zach also asked, do we have our center after the scrimmage of greatness? Uh, the center is set, but is, he's he's still not. Is he playing? Um, because there there is Harry. Harry Miller is the center, um, sure. but he I know he has missed some springtime. I don't know if he's going to be playing in the spring game or not. Um, Whipler, I think is your backup center. He's out. Michigan Bucknut says that he is in fact out. Um, isn't Matt Jones being hyped on? Yeah, but I think he'll, I don't think he'll be playing center. I think he'll be playing guard, but yeah, uh, I've, I've heard nothing but good things about both of the Jones is on along the offensive line. The one Jones is going to hold things down as like the first tackle to come in in you know just in case and matt jones is definitely fighting for one of those guard spots i feel like it's going to be paris johnson jr and someone else and might be matt jones it might it, it'll it, I, it might be vamahi uh i i'm i just i last week i was leading vamahi i might be leaning matt jones now um but we'll see uh, yeah, that the left guard position, I think, is the one position that we, we seriously need to. I, I feel like I feel very good. I feel very good about who is going to be starting week one at the other four offensive line positions. Uh, yep. Left guard. Eh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Speaking of the offensive line, uh, Michigan Buck not asks us um, how big of an impact is Max Ray transferring out to the depth chart? Not, not a lot. Uh, I think he transferred for a reason. I think he was probably going to be in the like backup tackle rotation. Um, 
I they'll they're going to be okay without him. Would I have preferred to have him? Yes. From a selfish yep. standpoint, would I rather he be on the team? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, will Ohio State drastically miss him? I hope not, because if that's the case, Ohio State will have had injuries. Yep. So a healthy Ohio State won't mix won't miss him at all. Um, and I mean that with no disrespect, uh, because I think he's going to go play somewhere and do great. But I don't think he wasn't going to crack the starting five. Mm-hmm. Agreed. All right. Before we get to the rest of the questions here, let's let's hear from our sponsors, Jared. Yeah, absolutely. Kyle, I made some poutine. Now, if you don't mm-hmm. know, it is a Canadian delicacy. Uh, so, of course, I reached out to the Mad Canadian because this it's what you do. And I was just like, hey, have you ever done this before? And he was like. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Or, oh, yeah, that's, you know, because he's Canadian and I made it and it was OK. And he gave me some like, oh, OK, here's what you did wrong. Here's what you did wrong. So I went back and I tried again and I have to say I nailed it. And what he basically told me was like, hey, you need more gravy, which, OK, that's that's fine. But I tell you what the real secret weapon was. The real secret weapon was that I just I, I coated the French fries in some S&P bud. And that was the difference. Because you must have S&P bud. I call it all of the time. I say it every time I do an ad read. It is the potato cheat code. It's it's for your baked potatoes. It's for your mashed potatoes. And it is also for your French fries. Your kitchen is not complete without the S&P bud, period. It's salt, it's pepper. It's a lot more than that, though. If you think it's just salt and pepper mixed together in a bottle, you are sadly mistaken, my friend. It is much more than that. And you need it in your kitchen. If you have ever eaten a potato or a vegetable, any other or another, potatoes are vegetables, (laughs) in your life, it will be improved by the S&P, but I promise you this. If you don't know, poutine, basically, it's French fries that you throw some cheese curds on. And if you've never had a cheese curd before, I promise you, it's it, it sounds gross. Like the word curd sounds gross. They're delicious. I promise you. It's it's they it's delicious. I promise you it's it's cheese. It's fine. You guys, I promise it's great. Uh, you throw the, the, the cheese curds. They come in like chunks. You throw those cheese curds on the French fries. Then you just cover that whole thing in gravy. And don't forget the S&P, bud. Put it on your French fries. Like if you're either while you're cooking them or if you're maybe if you're actually deep frying them after you cook them. Yeah, it is good. Michigan Bucknut, you're close enough to Canada. You're in Michigan. You should know. Uh. Toss the fries on it. Yeah, fresh out of the fry. Like I use an air fryer so you can put it on beforehand. But yeah, if you're using a, like an actual fryer, you put you put it on after. But yeah, coat, coat, coat all of that in some S&P, bud. And I promise you, it is the best you will ever do. I promise. And you can only buy the S&P, bud, at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Use promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout. That's SLOOPCAST10 at checkout to get 10% off your entire order. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. I mentioned a couple of the coffees, popular coffees that they have over at ironbeancoffee.com. Um, wanna, let's let's go into the back room. Uh, so if you go into their back room section of coffees, they, they have a handful um, that are just unique in flavors. Uh, I'll go over all of them here with you all. Um, the first one they have here is called the Cereal Killer, a vanilla butter cream. Um, it says this is a vanilla butter cream flavored single origin Brazilian um, beans. Uh, sounds really good. Um, they said it's a defined cereal as an ultra smooth, lightly roasted Brazilian coffee that that you can kill over and over again and the jury <laughs> will commend you. Uh, n- another one here is the bloodbath red velvet cake. Um, uh, yeah, sounds really good. It's a um, roasted to perfection with notes of decadent chocolate cake and a hint of cream cheese frosting. 
for, for those with a sweet tooth. Um, another one is called the Stay Awake Murderously Caffeinated. Uh, <laughs> they said, be warned, this is strong. The taste is bold and biting. So brew responsibly. Uh, <laughs> they say it um, has um, Arabic and Robusta beans. It will give you the morning or late night boost that you need to stay alive. Uh, the fourth one here is Turning Blue, a blueberry cinnamon crumble. I think I think that one, something I think Jared would really like. Um, I did. It's, I think in the one time I got a, a unicorn, I have the blurry camera on, you can't see it. That's a unicorn bag back there. I think this is what was inside the unicorn bag. And if it was, if that's what that was, it's delicious. Yep. Um, yep. It just has notes of blueberry and cinnamon in it. And the last one here is called a Solus ginger snap uh they say here that it it has it's pretty much like a gingerbread coffee so this sounds more something maybe later on in the year when it starts getting colder and into the holidays again but hey maybe you could have it now have it now if you're you're in that you can drink ginger year round all right my tea (laughs) drinkers know where my tea drinkers at (laughs) <laughs> my herbal tea drinkers be sure, sure to check out all of those and much much more over at again ironbeancoffee.com free shipping over 50 dollars. there you go again ironbeancoffee.com where iron bean coffee company is your america's local coffee roaster <laughs> sort of combine the mad canadian and where it's your america's like <laughs> i love it <laughs> i was tripping not i'm i we're we're we go back and forth, but like you can tell Kyle's way more comfortable doing the Mad Canadian and I'm way more comfortable doing Iron Bean just because we tend to do those more. All right. Back to the questions here. I, Good friend, I, I like gang. Oh, sorry. Gangland and I need to talk to you for a second. I like Earl Grey. I do. But the only tea I really drink is herbal because I like to drink it at the end of the day and I'm not trying to take in any more caffeine. But I do like Earl Grey. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. All right. Back to the questions here. Austin Formation, Jared. What kind of psychological impact can being the second best player at your position in a draft class be? Example would be like Miller and Stroud. Um, one of them will lose the starting job. Now, same can be said for a situation like Henderson and Pryor. Is that feeling of uh, inferiority? the reason why we are so many transfers for opportunity. Uh, You can, one, I I feel like it's just, it depends upon the person, right? Uh, Because Jack Miller hears us, not necessarily us. I feel like we've always given Jack Miller his his fair share but there are a lot of outlets out there that are like yeah but it's cj stroud it's cj stroud it's cj stroud it's cj stroud. you think jack miller doesn't hear that and by the way both and evan Pryor too evan Pryor hears everyone going ape shit about henderson he knows he knows he's not the freshman running back everyone's talking about he knows now What does that do to them psychologically? Well, for one, they still came here. Like in both cases, all of these players were committed to the class for a long time. They even Ohio State even went to Jack Miller and said, hey, the CJ Stroud kid wants to come here and we want to let him come here because when you're a quarterback, you get like you get those phone calls. Right. So Jack Miller said, bring him on. And from what I'm hearing about Jack Miller, CJ Stroud may have had may have had the better start to the camp, but Jack Miller's closing in on him. Jack Miller's closing in. That battle is not done yet. You treat it as motivation. Like you look at Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow was never gonna be the guy at Ohio State. He just wasn't. Now, did he quit? No. Did he keep fighting? Yes. Did that push? Everyone in that quarterback room, not just Joe Burrow. Did that push everyone in that quarterback room to be as good as possible? It sure as hell did. That pushed Dwayne Haskins to be as good as possible. He got picked in the first round. That pushed Joe Burrow to be as good as possible. He got picked first overall the the very next year. 
it just depends upon the mentality of the of the player. And again, Evan Pryor could have not committed. Jack Miller could have decommitted. They didn't. They came here to fight. That chip on the shoulder, a lot of players react to that positively. Agreed. 100%. They, they come to Ohio State to compete. Yes. If they, if they wanted to start somewhere, they'd go somewhere else. Pretty much. And sometimes that works out and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you're not the better person. Yep. Agreed. Uh, let's see. Another question from Austin. On a scale of one to 10, how much does the spring game itself, not the practices, actually matter? Uh, on a scale of one to 10, how does this, the spring game itself? Not at all. It, I give it like a two, maybe a three. Yeah. Just, just, just because you are put into an actual game like environment. So see how you react. Sure. But, but yeah. that's why it's not a one. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I'm with you on that, Kyle. I think I was going to give it a one, but you, you talked me into the two. Um, yeah, it's uh, what the spring game is, is one practice out of. I forget how many spring practices there are. Is it 10 or 15 or 12? I don't remember. But you're saying one practice out of an entire spring camp. You're ju- this is just one of those practices. Does this practice get elevated because it's the spring game and because there's pressure and, you know, there's it's on television. So there's pressure and it's in front of fans and media for everyone to see. So it's pressure. You see that that elevates it beyond a regular practice. But at the same time, everyone knows everyone's watching. So you're also not seeing new wrinkles you're Mm -hmm. seeing very vanilla stuff you're not seeing the actual offense you're not seeing the actual defense so that then takes that it was a little bit higher okay now it's a little bit lower because you're not really seeing the real stuff so yeah it's a two (laughs) it's a two it's just one practice with some upsides and some downsides compared to the other practices but it's just it's just a practice it's a it's a practice scrimmage that's it Mm -hmm. This one's interesting. This next question, also from Austin. What player would be pleasantly, but not genuinely surprised if they won the starting job and think deeper than Henderson or Stroud slash Miller, if possible? Well, I wouldn't. I don't think any of those guys would be surprised. Yeah. Um, yeah. First, first name that comes to me, he, he's got his black stripe removed, Sawyer. That's tough, though. There's a lot of good defensive ends in front of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Dewan Jones, that would be a surprise. Uh, all the talk right now is that he's basically the first backup tackle. If all of a sudden he was like, ah, I guess what your left guard now, I think he'd be surprised because he's mm-hmm. he's obvi- he's not going to displace Thayer Munford or NPF. And yeah. that spot is left over there. It, it, the, the one spot that's left is at left guard. Mm hmm. Harrison and Smith seem like a lock for ends unless one gets hurt. I agree with that gangland. Um, I, I would I would look at the linebackers like one of the young if one of the long, young linebackers gets named a starter, maybe Simon or Eichenberg. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, gangland. We either said that at the same time or you beat me to it. I, I think Eichenberg w- might be one of those guys. How a surprise starter, surprise a possible yet surprising starter. I kind of want to go more on the defensive tackle side. I mean, you got Garrett out right now. Maybe, maybe you look at that battle that's going on. Maybe like a Vincent or Antoine Jackson. Yeah. Um, who who is going to be the the one tech defensive tackle? I don't think we know that. We know who yeah. the three tech defensive tackle will be. Haskell Garrett's not playing in the spring game, but September second, we know it's going to be Haskell Garrett starting at the three tech defensive tackle. Who is that one tech defensive tackle? Well, something interesting that Haskell Garrett um, talked about on Friday, and this is over at uh, the Buckeye scoop that Tony has um, posted. Um, he, t- he talked about Haskell Garrett talked about 
I'm um, saying that everybody on that defensive line knows how to play both the nose tackle and the three tech. So um, it's not just like, oh, nope. One is they're just, this person is just only playing the one tech. This person is only playing the three tech. They're all being able to play each of those positions if they need to. Being able to and actually doing it on a regular basis are two separate things. Yeah. There, there's a reason why it's a separate position. And there's mm-hmm. a reason why they put the, you know, all defensive tackles are big, but there's a reason they put the big bigs at the one tech and the faster guys at the three tech. That right. That's not an accident. Haskell Garrett is mm-hmm. absolutely a three tech. And then you have uh, a guy like uh, Antoine Jackson, who's absolutely a one tech, you know, <laughs> And then there are a lot of defensive tackles who could theoretically jump back and forth between the two. Yep. Yep, yep. Uh, Cage feels like a definitive one tech. Ty Hamilton feels like a guy who could do either or both. Mm -hmm. Jaden McKenzie feels more like a three tech to me. But yeah, learn all of them for sure. Learn all of them. Yep. Uh, Another question from Austin. Who will make the play of the spring game that everybody talks about Henderson, his, his thoughts, his thoughts, Jerome Baker with an INT off of burrow and in, in pass in a pass. Oh, I was about to say, I got real confused there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Think Jerome yeah. Baker. Okay. Um, it's So if it gets everyone talking, then it's, it's probably a surprise people. player, right? Like if Chris Olave does something great, Garrett Wilson does something great. You just say, well, of course they did something great. They are I, them. I, I think I think I'll stick into that same position. Seeing a lot of different videos of number eleven here. What about uh, JSN? Seeing Jack- a lot of positivity, positive from JSN uh, so far this spring. So can we see him like make this ridiculous one-handed catch in, along the sideline or in the corner of the end zone, something like that? Yeah. Um- I, I think one of the young wide receivers, uh, either from the 2020 or 2021 class, um, I feel like people are just just waiting to see something out of Henderson. Uh, so I feel like that's a that's a good spot. And also, I feel like we're waiting, you know. Are the linebackers over the past few years are what they were. Um, and with the exception of Pete Warner, who was definitely a playmaker at times, we didn't see a lot of playmaking at the linebacker position over the past couple of years. So if one of the linebackers, a la Jerome Baker, as, as Austin pointed out, does something athletically amazing, whether it be Pope, who's not a young guy by any means, but not a guy we've seen on the field a lot, or Eichenberg, I'll name check Eichenberg again, or Simon, I'll name check Simon again. Um, then people will get very excited, I think. Yep, yep. All right. Um, what question do you want to go with next here, Jared? Oh, I haven't been following where you are in here. So I I you you're gonna so have let's, to keep let's going. Let's go down to the next group of questions here then. Um okay. what would do Michigan Bucknut? Why did Michigan dodge their spring game? <laughs> do they suck that bad or are they just trying to keep their new offense and defense a secret? I mean, if those are my only two options, if I have to choose between those two, it's because they suck. (laughs) It's it's really just that because you don't have to run your offense during a spring game. In fact, no one does. (laughs) Mm -hmm. No one really does. They run a maybe a a super strip down version of their go out there and run the wing T for all I care. They, They know how to do it. You can teach them how to do it. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of read it as Harbaugh's given up and it's just one less thing for him to worry about. I feel like they canceled the spring game about the time that they had to shut down the basketball program. Um, and that to me feels like they're using COVID as an excuse more than it is the actual reason. Um, yeah, gangland said he should have taken the jets job. Somehow that's worse. I feel like that's one of the last organizations I'd want to be associated with. Uh, But yeah, 
I don't know. I don't know why they canceled it. I mean, Ohio State's letting in fans for Pete's sake. You you can't have a. I I don't. If it's because of COVID, it was a knee jerk reaction that they made too early, and now are just afraid to back off of, which is a Big Ten tradition. So why not? All right. Uh. We're, we just did that Michigan Bucknut question. Go to Stewart. Let's go down to Stewart here, Jared. Okay. Uh, which quarterback gets paired with the first string offensive line? I think we talked about this earlier. Um, both. One way or the other, both. Like they're not, they're not going to give us a nod about who's winning the quarterback battle. Like I said, the either the either the quarterbacks are going to be team agnostic or they're both going to play with the starting offensive line. That that's how I see it happening. Mm -hmm. uh, if a quarterback is paired with the first string offensive line, does it mean they're QB one? It means so if that does happen, it means they're in the lead for QB one. But I really don't feel like they're going to name a starter. I've not even heard through the grapevine that either one of them are that much better than the other one that they have that they're even if they wanted to name a starter, they're not going to. Yep. Uh, what did uh, we get? Over, I think over, alternating under. drives or quarters. They'll definitely do alternating drives gangland. Yeah. It, and honestly, it might be plays. It might be alternating plays because they're not going to want to keep Alave and Wilson in there very long. Um, I, I don't expect to see if someone is a junior and has started games, they won't play in the second half even. So I feel like they're going to want to get both of the both of the primary quarterbacks mm -hmm. as many reps with all the other ones as possible. Yeah. Uh, over under on interceptions by quarterbacks at one and a half. Um, by the quarter, just for all the quarterbacks, the entire game. Yeah, I'll go over. Yeah, I'll, I'll, go, over. I'll go over as well. Just because mm -hmm. none of them are getting all of the reps at this point. Yep. I've also heard that CJ Stroud has a he has a strong arm and he can force it in there and he knows it. And he sometimes gets a little too confident doing so is yeah. the rumor I'm hearing on Stroud right now. So he's a little bit interception prone at this point. All right. This one's for Sun Card. Um, I see him online, but he hasn't joined here. So I was wondering to see if he was going to join here. <laughs> What's the weather forecast for the spring game? Well, I'm glad you asked, Stuart. Uh, looks like mid to low 60s. Partly cloudy skies early on, showers later on in the day. So as long as those showers stay late, should be a good should be a good day for football. All right, Stewart also gives us a few more over unders. Uh, tight end touchdowns one point. Let's just say one and a half. He's he's being funny with his numbers. Let's say one under. and a half. I'll go under. I'm gonna go under as well. Uh, Demario, I dare, dare, I, dare I dare I say even if it's point five, I take the under. <laughs> uh, I'd go over at that point. Uh, Demario call pass breakups. I don't know if this is a meme that exists outside of the Discord server or not, but the meme inside of our Discord server is that they're going to move Demario McCall to defensive back. I I I I don't participate in the meme, and therefore I will say under. <laughs> Agreed. Okay. Uh, running back touchdowns at three and a half. Under. I want to go over. I think I'm going to go Under. over. Uh, I think no, they'll pass the ball. No, you're right. Under. Under. Now, OK, let me throw one in, Kyle. If what about quarterback touchdowns at three and a half? Oh, oh, got him thinking. Got him thinking. Ooh, Gangland says over. over. <laughs> um, no, it has yes. to be a passing touchdown. I don't I'll, either. It has to be a passing touchdown. I'll go. Michigan uh, Bucknet no. still says over. I think I might go under with that one. I think three. I think three is the number I'm thinking of. Mm, 
Ah, uh, okay. I disagree. I'm I'm going I'm going with our uh guys down there in the live chat going over. Mm. All right, I ask a question. Kyle, I asked a question. Uh it is Henderson the running back at any point this year? That's a tough one. That's why I asked it. Ooh, we got a quick no. We got a quick no from Michigan Bucknut. The guy, I, I think I'll go no as well. Will he be? He's not going to be the guy, but he'll be, he'll be an important running back. <laughs> um, he, he, he'll, I think he'll, I think there's a good shot if, if all goes well, that he may be a starter later in the year, but being the guy, I, yeah, I think I'll go no. Hmm. I, I agree basically with everything you said. I think it's possible that he might work his way into starting. But getting like 85, 90 percent of the carries, probably not. Mm-mm. Agreed. Who is the from Nomad here? Nomad with a pair of questions. Who is the greatest Ohio State football coach to never win a natty? Easy. This is an easy answer. Easy answer, Kyle. Come on. Get there. Get there for me. Easy answer. Best Ohio State coach to never win a national title. Best coach. Best coach to never win the Natty at Ohio State. It's an easy question. It's an easy question. You got to be a little bit tricky. You got to be a little bit tricky. Got to think outside the box. Yeah, Cooper Psych. <laughs> he could have been the answer, but he's not. He could, he could, I mean, he had such great recruiting classes, such great players he coached. Come on, go. The answer. I don't know. You, I, don't, I don't know. Just answer it for me. Ryan dude. Day. Uh, come on, Kyle. There it is. It would have been Cooper three years ago. <laughs> that would have been the answer. Yeah. Uh, no man. He still can win it, but he yeah. hasn't yet. That wasn't the question. Yeah. Who should Ohio State dedicated cross division game be each year in football? Easy for me. Wisconsin. No. Cross division game. Oh, mm-hmm. that that I made you rethink it. Kind of. I mean, oh. Washington. Yeah. I mean, Washington, uh, Wisconsin. Yeah, I mean, definitely there. But I don't know. I think the history, I know they haven't been good in a while, but the history with Nebraska. I feel feel like we already play Nebraska every year. (laughs) No, I want I want I want the toughest schedule. I want I want to I want to play Wisconsin. They seem to be. From a consistency standpoint, that's a good that's a good point by gangland. Almost almost kind of like Happy Valley make Camp Randall. Um, sad every other year by the Buckeyes. Yeah, let's let's go. Uh, yeah, I feel like Wisconsin's consist is the most consistent team out of the West. I want to play yeah. Wisconsin every year. Okay. Uh, Stewart asks us why was Team Scarlet so dominant in our March Madness bracket? Easy, because I was the anchor of the gray team, and I don't know anything about basketball. I'm just I'm not, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> Uh, and should Wisconsin switch with Michigan to come to the East? Uh, no. I, I mean, no. 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 <laughs> no. That's just going to mess up the rivalry structure too bad. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Kabuto, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, how uncomfortable does it make you? make you to talk about running backs wiggle (laughs) we have a lot of weird terminology in football (laughs) we have a lot of weird football terminology uh talking about a a running backs wiggle um that doesn't (laughs) even i I don't even think makes the makes the top 50 percent we have a lot of weird terminology in football yeah it doesn't make me uncomfortable so 10 being the most uncomfortable i take a three I'd say doesn't two. Make, doesn't make not not, not yeah not at all. 
Uh, it's a chopper. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, asks Justin to the 49ers. This is our first. This is our first draft based conversation of the year, Kyle. Fields to the 49ers. Sure. <laughs> sure. I if I had to pick one team, that's where I'm going. Am I going to say it's a for sure thing? No. But if, if you said, OK, Jared, here's the 32 teams. Which team are you going to put money on? I'd put money on the 49ers, but that's the best option out of the 32. But that doesn't mean I'm sure it's going to happen. So. If I had to pick a team, yes, if I have, if I don't have to pick a single team, if it's 49ers versus the field, I think I'm going to go the field. I don't understand why. Why a lot of these experts have Mac Jones, even after what we've seen the past few weeks, have Mac Jones so high up. Well, a lot of the experts are just reflecting what they're hearing from GMs. You know what I mean? Like a lot of uh, people get confused sometimes, I think, where not 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 all of the draft Knicks are saying Mac Jones is great. A lot of them are just acknowledging that there are people within the NFL who think that. Now, why do those people think that? I don't know. Is it a smoke screen? Possibly. Also, the, the other thing you have to remember is most of the news, most of the the leaks and the things people are hearing and yada, yada, yada around draft season, 80% of it's fake. It's the team putting something out there that they want other teams to hear that isn't true. It's it's all it's all a bunch of gamesmanship. That's all it is. Okay. Uh, what other questions do we have? Uh, here? The um, last one on the list, I think, is a really good question. All right, from Buckeye Esquire. In, in your view, our view, how should the coaching staff balance what's best for the individual kid versus best for the team in timing the announcements of depth chart, particularly for the age of, of free or transfers? Uh, so, but yeah, the, the, I think the question here is how transparent are you with the kids on where they are on the depth chart? Um, I, I think announcement, like, is that a public announcement? Is that an internal announcement? Um, but I, I think the spirit of the question is just like how transparent should the coaches be? Um, uh, let's see what, what did uh, gangland say? Uh, one-on-one -on -one meetings are needed for that rather than just putting up a depth chart in the Woody. And I think I agree. I, I agree with that. And, and I don't believe that I, I really don't believe that there's like a, a depth chart written on a chalkboard somewhere where, you know, players are moved around in the middle of the locker room. I don't I don't feel like it's 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 that um, the kids know here. Here's the thing that I think a lot of people get confused about when they talk about this subject. Oh, well, where do you, do you tell the kid that he's the number two quarterback? Do you tell the kid that he's not going to start? Do you tell they know? They're not stupid. They know. They know who's getting the most reps. They know who's repping with the ones. And by the way, they just know when someone else is better than they are. Mm -hmm. They know. They look at someone and they go, oh, he's bigger than me. He's faster than me. He's stronger than me. He's younger than me. I'm going to peace out now. Mm -hmm. They know. Now, to then take that back to how transparent should the coaches be? The coaches should never lie. If a kid walks in there and he goes, I know I'm third string, I'm going to transfer. If the coach then says, no, no, you're fantastic. I'm just repping the younger guy because you have plenty of reps. No, 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 don't worry. 
if they're lying, that's a line too far. If the kid walks in and says, I'm third string, I, I goes, I think I'm third string and I think I should transfer. And if that's true, the coach says, you are third string. I don't want you to transfer. But yes, you are currently third string. I would love it if you stayed here. But yes, you are currently third string. That's a one on one conversation that should be had. And I, the coach, I the only real requirement for me is that the coach not lie. That's it. Because the kids know. Yep. Now, if you gaslight them and you say, no, 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 you're actually the best guy. I just never start you with the starters for other reasons. And you gaslight the hell out. Oh, no, what are you talking about? You get plenty of reps with the first string. You're crazy. That that's sick. That's that's bad. I don't I'm I'm sure stuff like that happens and it's terrible. Um, but just be honest. That doesn't mean you have to be forthcoming because you how 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 much time do you have to have a one on one meeting with 120 kids? How often? I don't know. but. If the player approaches you and asks you a question, you need to respond honestly. And I think that's that's where the coach has to commit to that. But as far as like a formal depth chart, the kids know. They know. Mm -hmm. Am I right, Kyle? Anything you said, anything I said there you disagree with? Nope, I, I co-signed that. No, absolutely. You want to be as transparent as possible. Yeah. Um, you don't you don't want to be like, Oh yeah, no, you know, you're you're important part. I just it, it, just give it a just give it give it a a game. Give it two games. Give it a month, and then yeah. it just it just never comes. Yeah, yeah, that's terrible. Just be honest. That's it. Agreed. Yep. Uh, Kyle, I think that's that's it for I think that's it for the show. Yep. And then next week next week we'll cover the spring game. Our thoughts about it. And um, and then we start getting inching closer and closer to the weight slam period. Yeah. So, we'll, if, you, so if you have a if you have a question or an idea of like what to talk about during our wasteland um, time, hit us up on the Discord. Uh, join us. Join us at um, down in the links. Check us out on on our Twitter pages. Um, we'll have links of how to get to our Discord. Um, a lot of fun in there. Just a lot of great folks in there and uh, just talk about just everything and anything in general. Yeah, there's a bunch of off topic stuff. So it's not like it's not like it goes dead during the off season. We're constantly in there chatting. If you ever just want to chat with Kyle and I, that that is absolutely it's not a discord we set up and walk away from. Like I know some bigger creators are forced to do because they don't have time. Um, we aren't that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you, you, you can join the discord and have conversations with Kyle and I, and a lot of the, uh, the people who you, uh, hear us mention on the show. Um, and if you're looking for links, just go to the sloopcast.com. Uh, you get links to our socials and links to the discord. The discord, by the way, is just discord.thesloopcast.com. But if you want links to that or our Patreon or our merch stores, our social media sites, whatever, you can go to the sloopcast.com. Um, hey, Kyle, can you show everyone your shirt? Can can you show everyone your shirt? Look at that. That's a, it says Buckeye Sloopcast and it's it's done up like a GoldenEye uh t-shirt, like from the old GoldenEye 64 game. And if you want it, too bad. <laughs> because Ohio State's lawyers are assholes. <laughs> they claimed that shirt they forced our t-shirt vendor to take it down. Why? I don't know. It says Buckeye, but it doesn't say Buckeye football. Like a Buckeye is a tree. You don't own the tree. It is the state tree, you bastards. I don't know where on earth you think you get off claiming that shirt. 
I'm wearing a 7071 shirt and this is entirely my own design. And you can uh, buy some of these. You can buy some 7071 merch over at 7071.sleepcast.com. And you should probably go check out all the stuff we have over at uh, merch.thesleepcast.com. That's our actual like Sloopcast stuff, because it seems like Ohio State will just take shit down without any logic. So if, if there's something there that you want, you should probably go get it. Because Ohio State just takes shit down, even when it has nothing to do with them. Nothing to do with you, Ohio State. Nothing. So go get whatever you want while you still can, because the lawyers at Ohio State are dicks. Buy it while you can. Yep. <laughs> Kyle drops a eating popcorn. Yeah, I, I got off on a thing there, didn't I? <laughs> it pisses me off because like i okay i have posted things on there you got me going again which is what you wanted i have posted <laughs> things on there that are borderline if not over the line as far as like infringing on ohio state trademarks i i i acknowledge that look at that t-shirt kyle's wearing it is in no way if if anything it would be like It'd be like Nintendo, Nintendo or whoever the movie studio is that did Goldeneye. Yeah. Nope. Ohio State. Yeah. If I don't know who who is it, MGM? I don't know who does the Bond movies. If they came at me, I'd at least be like, OK, OK, that's fine. Like, I I don't like it, but OK. Yeah, you, you're going to. Ohio State, you don't own any of that. You don't own the word Buckeye. It's the goddamn state tree. No, they don't gangland. It's just that T Public are a bunch of wusses. So if Ohio State says something to take something down, they just do it. And I have no recourse to fight it. They just Ohio State can literally just claim whatever the hell they want and uh T public just won't fight them on it. That's it. They just say, hey, that's ours. And T public just takes it down. Because they suck. Kyle, we need to start printing our own t-shirts. Sounds that way. All right. Uh, that's I, I guess that's it. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, speaking of Ohio State, uh, former Ohio State great, Eddie George taking the new job, head coaching job, over at Tennessee State, which is really interesting. No coaching experience, let, it, let alone head coach experience. No. Heading over to be a head coach at a college. You know, at program. least at least when Deion Sanders took the job at Jacksonville State, is that right? I think that's right, Jacksonville State. Um, but I don't know that, yeah. Gangland says if Dion can do it, so can Eddie uh, Jackson State. I'm just am I just adding the vill in there? It doesn't matter. I don't care. Um, the. At least Dion Sanders was the do, was doing like high profile high school coaching. It wasn't head coaching and it was high school. So it's still pretty questionable that you get to be the coach at a I don't care if you're Dion Sanders or not. Mm -hmm. the, the UA All-American game doesn't count for anything. Um, I mean, all the luck to Eddie George, I hope he succeeds, but this feels like a stunt hire, if I'm being honest with you. I, I don't know what this actually accomplishes. Mm -hmm. Other than being like, oh, you're a Tennessee Titan great. It's a purely a recruiting move. They're just hoping they can get a higher caliber player because Eddie George's name still carries a lot of water in the state of Tennessee. So I guess that's worth something. By the way, Eon Productions. I'm sorry, what? Eon Productions. That makes James, makes Bond? James Bond movies. Okay. I, who's the studio, though? I think that's the production company. Who's yes, the it studio? It doesn't. Yeah, I still don't care. It, it doesn't matter. 
All right, that's it for today's episode, Jared. Uh, tonight's ending music will be uh, by the Dayton punk band, The Dopamines, who are releasing a, a new collection of singles and rarities on April 22nd. So I'll be playing something uh, from that. Uh, it's, uh, it's some of their singles and it's some of their rarities. So I guess it's a, it's a best of of sorts. Uh, so I don't know which song I'm playing yet, but we'll be playing a dopamine song at the end of today's show and, and like, listen to all of it. Cause they're like a fun, fast punk songs. So it's not even a very long song. So make sure to stick around and listen to the whole thing. Uh, if you're listening on our audio only podcast, if you're watching us on YouTube, just stick around for the secret hidden conversation that only the YouTube people get to see. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the dopamines. What's up, YouTube? What's up, Discord? Am I wrong about Deion Sanders and Eddie George? <laughs> Maybe at that level, just getting like a couple extra star players is just good enough, which yeah. is essentially what you're doing. You're convincing a couple kids who aren't you know, D1 talents, or maybe we're like bottom tier D1 talents to come play school for the famous football player. Mm -hmm. I don't, you be, I don't you may think be happy to hear Jared. You may be happy to hear this. Your good friend, Dan Dockich no longer has Twitter. Well, <laughs> I was never, Dan Dockich was never like my enemy number one, but he doesn't have Twitter anymore for uh, other, we'll say other reasons. Uh, I think uh, Gangland says, I think someone with NFL experience can teach better than most. Not necessarily. Just because someone can do doesn't mean they can teach. Just because someone can teach doesn't mean they can do. Those are completely different skill sets. And yeah. as saying, Kyle and I in our real lives are IT people. And I can tell you right now, there's a lot of IT people who can do. There are very little IT people who can train. Because social, <laughs> socially, we aren't the most uh, adapt people. So, right, but I promise you that's the same. It's the same everywhere. Mm. Uh, case in point, the fact that Michael Jordan was never successful in every in any facet of basketball other than playing it. Larry Bird was a great coach, but. Michael Jordan couldn't manage a team, couldn't coach a team, couldn't generally manage the team. He, and he was literally the best to ever do it. To me, I think the best guys who go from playing to coaching are the Steve Kerrs of the world who were, you know, sixth or seventh off of the bench who had to be students of the game and had to work their tails off just to not get cut. Those are the guys who become good coaches in my mind. Very rarely. Yeah. Well, yeah. Ryan Day was a, was a division two guy. So that makes perfect sense in my head. Mm -hmm. um, Larry Bird appears to be like the exception to that rule where he was both a star player and a very good coach. It doesn't happen I, I know, too often. I know this is too early because he's still playing, but what do you think about LeBron James? I, I don't know. I really don't. I, I know. could I could see him being a, a a good coach now. Great coach, maybe not, but I think he could. I think he could be a good coach from what what I've seen. Maybe maybe ego may get into that, but <laughs> ego can help though. You think okay. Bill Belichick isn't an ego maniac? You think Nick Saban <laughs> isn't an ego maniac? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, All right. We're we're not bringing baseball into this gangland. Uh, baseball's just the coaches don't really even coach. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go ahead and um, wrap this up here, Jared. Okay. Would once again like to thank 
uh, the dopamines for ending today's podcast. And I once again, would like to thank the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company for sponsoring today's podcast. Let's see. I talked a bit about the the Kerry steak because I used that this weekend. And I talked a little bit about the S&P bud because I used that this weekend. I'm going to talk now about the old fashioned because it's bourbon and it's cherry. And how can you possibly go wrong with bourbon and cherry and a little bit of sweet and a little bit of bitter. And it's just tremendous on beef or pork, I, I think, or your, but you know what? I've done it on chicken too. It's also really good on chicken. Um, but it does have a good, it does have like a really good strong flavor. So it can overpower the chicken a tad, but, uh, I think it's still very good on chicken. Uh, there's the oak, which is smoked ranch. Do I need to say more? It's smoked ranch. It's, it's, it's ranch and it's smoked. It's two of the best flavors ever combined into a bottle. Um, I talked about how the S and P bud is insanely versatile. Well, just as versatile are the Sonoran heat, which is again, like almost as versatile as the S and P bud, but has a little bit more of a Southwest kick to it. And then there's the Cajun, which is also extremely versatile, but has more of a New Orleans feel to it. So, you know, those are some of your, your most uh, versatile spices. Uh, and you can actually buy all of those, including the smoked, which is also insanely versatile because this is essentially the versatility box in the just send it box. Uh, the just send it box, that's what it's called. I call it the versatility box. That's my own personal nickname for it. It's the S&P bud, the Sonoran heat, the Cajun and the smoked all in one box set. So you can get all four of them for considerably less money than you would buying them individually. And then you can still use the promo code Sloopcast10 at checkout to get another 10% off. So you're basically stealing the spices. Don't tell the Mad Canadian I said that, but you're basically stealing spices from him at that point. Uh, and you can do that by going to the madcanadianbbq.com. Once again, that is the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company where he has your butt covered. This episode was also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Now, the middle of the show, we went behind the back door to showed some of the really unique flavors. Well, let's 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 go back into the front, the front of the, of the coffee shop here. And let's look at some of their common um, flavors that they have over at ironbeancoffee.com. Uh, first off, we have Dylan's Grog. What is Dylan's Grog? Well, it's a butterscotch rum and a hint of vanilla. Um, how does that sound to you, Jared? It's it's a, it's a grog. Grogs, if you don't know, are essentially like the IPA of the coffee world. Everyone has a grog. <laughs> or the Irish cream. It's it's Irish whiskey, coffee, cream, and sugar. And now I capture it in their Irish cream flavored coffee. It's mellow, creamy, warming mixture that is greatly enhanced by the flavors of our premium roasted coffee. The intense blueberry. Blueberry. Who doesn't like blueberry? <laughs> um, Mom's carrot cake. Uh, they said here it's a carrot cake with cream cheese flavor. Um, they said it embodies embodies the classic carrot cake recipe made from scratch with cream cheese icing, and it is amazing. Or the mint chocolate chip, just like blueberry. Who doesn't like mint chocolate chip? Or like what Jared has in the blur background there, the unicorn. Who the hell knows what kind of coffee it is? It's right there in the description. Unicorn, who the hell knows what kind of coffee it is? You won't know until you get it delivered to your front door. Check out those and all the other great coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. Again, that's ironbeancoffee.com. Free shipping over $50 of your entire order. Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's Coffee Rooster. <laughs> 